Yes, welcome, beloved. It's such an honor to always have this chat, life-changing chat. I call it a life-changing chat. And then some of you have actually helped us bring more names to what we actually call this. And you have said that um, your eyes have been opened to some of these situations. And sometimes you feel like you lived in a life where you were making bad decisions upon bad decisions. And now all of a sudden, you're like, where have you been? Like, I wish I knew you 20 years ago. I would not have made this kind of mistake i wish i knew you five years ago so some of you are writing some of those things and we are thinking okay at least this sets us on a good precedence because then we know that it's not just us talking about these things but these things actually exist they come from you the questions are being asked by you the situations are being sent by you and we love handling the real the reality of issues as they are and that is our ministry and that is why we are here and we are never getting tired of doing this. Sabiti is my name. I love it when people call me Bahati. I know. <laughs> you guys, you have forced the name Bahati on my husband for so long. <laughs> and now he has gotten to a place where he's resigning. He's not fighting, no arguing. He's not reminding anyone that he is Sabiti. And uh, I, I just love the grace with which... <laughs> <laughs> the grace with which you receive the name because yeah. everyone's like oh mr and mrs bahati like literally every restaurant we go to every hotel we go to every banking hall we walk into every gathering we walk into but i, I will yeah <laughs> but above all i appreciate i thank god for the feedback mm. you know when you this side you are only talking to cameras you're talking to, to microphones, microphones and I mean, when we get the feedback, it's encouraging. Yes. I want to congratulate the negative ones because they also help us. Mm. There are those who are so super at being negative. Oh, but yes. then it really helps. I, I've gotten to a place where I really appreciate. People are struggling. Mm. People are going through a lot. They have a yeah. lot of pain and yeah. they don't know how to manage that. Yeah. So the only way they release is by venting, is mm. by attacking, yeah. is by uh, insulting mm. and ETC and ETC. Mm. But then also shows us that there's more work to do. Yes. When we find such people in our space, we are like, no, 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 please don't block them. Don't send yes. them away. Let them stay. Uh, let them stay. Let we them need, watch we the need, goodness of the Lord. We need them. We need mm. them. We need them because then... The uh, question is, how do you turn that negative energy into positivity? Mm. How do you help such a person navigate better, mm. live better, and have a better life? And you'll find so someday that person referring to No, someone. they do. They mm. do. They do. Eventually, they, they, they do. They change. Because by the time they can get onto their phone on their own data... And type something. Uh -huh, mm. Then they're interested. Mm. So... Um, yeah. You keep going. You keep going. All keep right. Going. And we're, yeah. we're not backing down. We're yeah, not we're backing not down. Sure. And um, recently there is a question that I've been doing a series of um, live sessions with different banks and different corporate spaces. And um, most of them definitely are asking relationship questions because they feel like at, at a corporate level they've been trained on human resource, on communication, stuff like that. But most human resource managers feel like most of these staff or workers or employees are picking problems from their relationships and their marriages and they're bringing them to the banking halls and to the different working places and different companies. And so they're saying that even when we are at a workplace we want to be able to help them to deal with their issues so that they don't bring uh, that kind of uh, heaviness into the workspace so that they can affect our clients and so one of the questions that has been so rampant and this is amongst women they're like how can I deal with with resentment like can a marriage survive resentment and I remember it was two of them that were so vivid that they came into my inbox and I was like I think the level at which I have reached in the resentment I think um, is too much that it can't be handled by anyone it could have been handled maybe 10 years ago maybe eight years ago but I think I have kept quiet for a very long time and we have gone without addressing these issues for a very long time and I don't think we are at a place where these things can be handled because 
even myself, I am not willing to face these issues, let alone my husband. So now we are drifting apart, and we know we have drifted apart, but we are holding on to a home that we are staying yeah. in together, yeah. and we keep coming back to it with the children. But you can feel the coldness in the corridors. I know. You can feel the silent wars and the silent Painful. battles. You can feel the prayers that are hitting the ceiling and coming back. There is no breakthrough on both our sides. Our families gave up on us uh, because then... Um, we are not saying anything. We decided not to say anything. They know we are battling, but they don't know how to start. Exactly. I was in um, at my place where I do go to work out our gym, and then I encountered this gentleman who had come there, mm. of course, to a bit work out and then relax a little bit, get a bit of a massage, and and you know, and we engaged into a conversation because of one of the workers. Mm. He said. A particular worker here mm. by the name so and so is very negative and i really hate to make someone lose a job but i'm mm. going to do it wow. because this is my this is like home to my me. resting place mm. this is like home to me mm. after i've gone around the city battled you know um the chaos on the streets uh, bitterness of uh, uh, clients I come here to relax. and service providers. After a very hectic day, mm. I only come here to relax. I don't want another person giving me attitude. Mm. So I'm going to report her. So we engaged in a conversation. So I like it when you said when I go to corporate organizations, I've mm. been getting this kind of feedback. It's happening everywhere. Yeah. That people carry their resentment into their workplaces. Mm. They don't know when to draw the line between their, the, their life mm. and their workplace. Mm. And when it's too heavy on them, the best is to break down. Yeah. So I realized this girl has her issues. She's going through her issues. Mm. But then her issues cannot help her uh, deliver her a workplace. Yes. Because now it's, she can't just, manage it's, her just, it's just not only one client. It's mm. another client, another client, and another client. Before, before you realize you are fired from your workplace and you're back home jobless. Again, to be even more. Hurt. Hurt. And more resentful. Exactly. Mm. So, when you mentioned so that, I was like, going. hey, mm. it's a serious thing, by the way. It's people are really stressed and they don't know why they are stressed. It's huge. It's in churches. It's in churches, not just corporate companies. Mm. And in churches, we say, God bless you and pray for you. But pastors ought to go down and deal with their staff, with their ushers, anyone that is on the serving team. Anything can happen. They come with that baggage. Yeah. And before you know it, there's someone who is thinking that, you know what, I come to worship. But Hilda, with, and, mm, with most of our churches mm, here, mm, it's it's hard. Mm, because some because it's free service. No, no, some of them don't have structures. Mm. And some of them are uh, too, too huge. That the, the distance between and the gathership and the pastor is really huge that you can go to a church and the pastor doesn't even know that you exist. Mm. So the only way is be structured and have uh, uh, fellowships and uh, zonal pastors in zones mm -hmm. to be able to help these people. But some of the some of the pastors don't. I mean, churches don't have the capacity to. So but that's even why when you some mention that, are running under. Uh, yes, even when you mention that, I'm like, ah, uh, mm. uh, mm. what the church needs is help. To structure. To, to structure and then to not only structure but be effective even in the structure, mm. structure nani, the way they have structured themselves. Mm. So, so it's, it's tough. It's tough. Just look at a home. Just at a home. Mm. Um, I think the recent uh, population has been helping us a lot. Mm -hmm. I was reading an article about uh, the parents. I was more interested in the fathers, the fathers' involvement mm. in the lives of their children. Mm. And Hilda, it is so hurting. Mm. The margin is too big that some children have grown without knowing. Their fathers. As in, you have, you have a biological figure called a father but you do not have someone playing the role of a father in your yeah, life yeah. as in the daddy roles the yes. real roles of as in i'm available i'm, I'm available i'm involved available. i can pray with you i, can I want to listen to you. you i can do homework with you mm. as in you go down to that and they're like, totally detached hey, hey, hey. and and then when you try to talk to them they will tell you mm. it is our work um our work the way we're structured in the way we work we Enough live culture. we live home 
at around 5 because we're supposed to be in office at 7. Mm. We leave office at 7 or 8 p.m. and we report home around 10 p.m. because of sleeping. the traffic jam. Mm. So like ourselves, we don't even understand what we are going through. So you're asking us to take care of the kids how. Mm. So the kids in homes are being taken care of by, by nannies. Exactly. Mm. So it's, um, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. Mm. Uh, as in, it is, by the way, a big issue. A so real big issue issues, out there that mm. that what you call resentment is not only happening with Marriages that man who lives who lives who has an issue with the husband. Yeah. Even the kids themselves are going through the same. Exactly. They feel like someone brought us into this earth and they don't mind. And they don't and they don't care. And so they resent you. Yeah. And the resentment is rising. Yes. Yes. In friendships, resentment is rising. Yes. In family, rela rela uh, relative kind of uh, relationships, resentment is rising. So it's no one is immune to this. And I think every one of us, unless you want to lie, there is, you have felt uh, resentment towards someone. And sometimes, by the way, this resentment, someone doesn't have to really do much. Yes, there are things that we're going to talk about that bring about this resentment. But sometimes what is going on in your own life also just uh, makes you um, intoxicated. Yeah. It's like you are drunk and you're just bringing all the drama into the different spaces that you go to. But when we look at uh, resentment, I just want us to, to understand what resentment really is. Because we will talk about resentment and people will feel, oh, this is anger. Yes, anger is just a little piece, of the a little bit. Limit. It's actually the, the manifestation of resentment. Anger is a manifestation. Explosion is, is a manifestation. manifestation. An outburst is yeah. a manifestation. Um, all these things, throwing tantrums and all that, those are manifestations. But <clears throat> The real word resentment is the actions that have been done to you that are unjust. Yeah. You feel, you because we all have dif different definitions of unjust. You might feel like what you're doing to me by critiquing me, you feel that is just, I'm actually giving you a piece of, of my mind. And yet for me, I don't receive that criticism exactly. so well. So you realize that no one has a measurement and a formula for just treatment. Even when we know certain things that do not beat someone, do not insult them, do not backbite, do not rumor monger. But there is when you even do something that you would think you're correcting someone, cause correcting someone, but they don't receive it in good terms and they feel like that was unfair. So it's an emotion associated with unfair yes. treatment, treatment, unjust so treatment. So someone interprets it as unfair treatment. Exactly. For as long as they interpret it as unfair, that is how... People go into silent treatments. Yeah. That is a, a signal. So to let, show you. let's just be a little bit practical, mm. maybe for someone who is watching to understand. Mm. Uh, as we said, it's, it's an emotion that is associated with unfair, unfair treatment. But yes. again, I like what you put, mm. more like a disclaimer that it is dependent on your interpretation. Yes. You feels, because sometimes someone is doing it not knowing that they're hurting you, yes. but eventually they are hurting you. Yes. For example, someone. Um, I've gi I'll give an example of a man is mm. returned home mm. from a very busy day mm. all through the hassles he's been stressed with work and he has an, an um, uh, a pile of um, reports to make and he doesn't even know you, you know that kind of stress that lingers yeah. in the subconscious oh, it's bad. It's bad. and uh, and you divided so so your wife at home doesn't know even a little bit of what you're going through yeah. but he expects he expects he expects you to give him to give her full attention mm. and so she's trying to engage you and you are mm. absent yeah you're absent mm. you just keep saying mm. 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 Uh, but have you understood what uh, i'm please, saying please 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 I'll, mm. I'll, I'll come back to you. but mm. he's not telling you that he's going through something yeah he's so, stressed so would you think that the woman who's trying to seek the husband's attention is right to be angered definitely because okay. that's right her to, interpretation because she thinks it's mm. deliberate that you are not giving, giving me, me the attention, attention. so she, I, has she one feels side. like she feels like probably i don't deserve it yes uh probably maybe i'm not good enough probably maybe she's probably, with someone else probably <laughs> yes mm. you wouldn't even have come back home yes you would have stayed there with your boys mm -hmm. and spent your evening with the boys mm. maybe you would have gone to spend your time and be happy anywhere else but you're back to this home just to give me this this attitude. attitude and just look at this if that but, man, but, but then mm. a, a, a little bit i mm. use that i was so specific to use that example because mm. this man is battling something 
is battling something mm. that he has not disclosed. Mm. And sometimes the conversations I've had with the men are, even when I try to engage my wife to understand what I'm going through, she doesn't. She doesn't. Yeah. She does not have the capacity to understand the nature of my work. Mm. That me trying to involve her is just burdening her. Mm. So in most cases, I, I burden right. myself twice when I try to involve her. Mm. Because then I have another person to explain to something that, that she, she will, will never, never understand. understand. Mm. And just imagine. And then that sometimes, is not her job some, sometimes, doing today. sometimes the, the, the interesting part is mm. that some husbands have said, when I disclose more, I end up empowering my, my wife to hate people on my behalf. She ends up hating my supervisor. She, hates, she ends up uh, hating my, um, my boss. Why? To her, they are unfair to me. Yet I know what the problem is. The only thing is, whatever communication that I did, she did not pick elements of that conversation to build me or help me. She picked elements that could only trigger her emotions to get angered and hate on my behalf. Mm. So, they're like, so I just keep it to myself. I don't involve her because the few times I've tried, it's not been good because she's ended up sometimes texting some of my partners mm. and she's like, please give my husband some peace. Like, okay, where is this coming from? Mm. Y you know that kind of thing? Mm. So, I want you to help me, Hilda, because, and again, you'll be helping so many men in the area of resentment, I understand. It is a negative, em it's an emotion attached mm. to what you would interpret as unfairness. Mm. But at the same time, someone is telling you that the reason as to why she interprets it as unfairness is because I don't know to what degree I can involve her in this particular thing I'm going through. Mm. The few times I've tried, she's, un she's misunderstood me and she's mis misrepresented me and sometimes she's costed me quite a mm. lot in terms mm. of my relationships and partnerships at my workplace. Mm. Over to you. The thing <laughs> is, when when we go back to how the resentment can actually be handled in such a case, yeah. a scenario that you have explained, there has to be a clear communication. Yeah. Now, even when you deem her not to understand, why isn't she understanding? Because sometimes we are dealing with things that are on top of the carpet, and yet there's a backlog down of things that are uncleared. Just imagine if there's a track record of such a behavior even before that job. Mm -hmm. So even when you tell her about that job, she is thinking, you've held other three jobs and you have been the same person, you know, deal, you don't know how to deal with your stress and I end up not getting the time. So now I come complaining knowing that I will not get the time. Yeah. So you realize that when the clarity of communication comes in from the onset of the job and you know that, you know what, this is exactly what's happening. This is what we're taking on our plate. These are the kinds of reports. These are the kinds of people I report to. And definitely sometimes uh, it also depends on the, on the lady. Some ladies, if they are not busy, if they, are, they, they don't know who they are, they don't know their roles, they don't know. Most of the times they will keep crisscrossing into things that they are not theirs. I don't but feel, clear, I, communication. clear communication. It has I to agree. be too clear and crystal clear. I know that you will say, oh, keep some information or do something. But also, love is an adventure. Marriage is an adventure. Understand the person that you married. Very good. I because think if you understand the person that you married, then saves you will you a lot. know because, what Hilda, to say and what not One to thing, say. Uh, reason as well, I, I, don't, I don't want to feel like I'm defending men here. Mm. But I will tell you that sometimes, on almost times, the difference between us and the women we marry mm. is huge. Huge in so many ways. Career, understanding of the career, because sometimes you will find my line of business is east, as far as east mm. and west. So is my wife from what I'm doing. Mm. Rarely will you find a situation where I'm in broadcasting, you're in broadcasting. So when we talk about broadcasting, the conversation is flawless thing is i'm talking about someone mm. who is taking the opposite direction in terms of career and the other one is the opposite well you'll find a middle ground when it comes to that discussion mm. but in most cases the challenges that most men face is she does not have a clue mm. or understand or any form of understanding of what i do even the few times i have tried mm. i've only thrown myself into trouble you get that point mm. so when you mentioned that it's good to understand the kind of woman you marry. Oh, there is also the age difference. Mm. 
yeah, age difference. That, because they, uh, I, I had an opportunity to uh, be between, I was trying to help a couple, and the age difference could have been like between 15 to 18 years. That is huge. Where the girl is talking about Rihanna, and the guy is is talking about investment not just investment mm, mm. but possibility of losing an investment that is close to a million dollars and the girl does not understand all that she wants is the another happiness. another nice wig, wig. Mm. all that she understands is another uh, ha- hangout my mm. friends have uh, 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 whatever shower and and the guy is saying now how do i get this woman to understand what i'm going through mm. right now mm. you can you help me you get a point mm. So sometimes the age difference is a, a, a huge contribution. Uh, intelligence. Yes, the level, uh, level of, intelligence. of intelligence. Yes, that's and, important. And, and, and very and important. I, I probably m- uh, may find, may f- okay, I may not sound really, but um, I'm finding, f- I'm f- trying to find words that. No, don't it's as seem straight as it is. Do not meander. It's so as straight. There are some women that will not reason at all. At all, at all. Yeah. It will come from their background. It will come from their level of education, some of them, or level of exposure, some of them. But there are some people, just like there are some men who will also be the be same. the same, yeah. Yes. But there are some women you will look at and you're like, na yay. Like, mm-hmm. where, where, do I, where do I even where start? Do I start? Yeah. You actually know that they are not going to understand or pick anything, any yeah. sense in what you are saying. Yeah. But they are your so wife. I, li- I like what you say that you use it well when you said mm. get to understand your partner. Yep. Get to understand your partner. Because mm. then after understanding your partner, you would know how to, to lead. Yes. I would use the word lead. You know how to what lead. What to omit, yep. what to disclose, yeah. and all those things that controls will, will be very evident. But the other aspect also um, are you looking at this relationship as a wholesome relationship that, yes, the element of time could be affected, but is the element of affection affected? Is the element of intimacy affected? Is the element of their love language, you get it, affected? You get So, because if you say that the time aspect is affected, but they do not feel the affection whatsoever, you don't even have lunch time to text someone to tell them you miss them, you cannot make love to someone because you have deadlines. So that means if the whole pa- if the whole thing is spoiled, then this person has all reasons to punch holes in everything that in every reason that you're giving. Because some men will be giving reasons and the reasons will be as useless Cold, yeah. and hollow and shallow. As in, but I don't have time. I don't have time and and what? You can make you cannot make love to someone because you don't have time. You cannot text them, you cannot buy them a gift, you cannot take a weekend with them. You get it. So now the surrounding issues also um gravitate or even grow or skyrocket the resentment. Because while someone it's like when you go somewhere, people couples have come to to us all the time, and the time of uh, the, the element time is something that is really outstanding. And so when this lady talks about that the ta- the time, and then it's like, but everything else, you don't leave money because of the time, you don't. So look at everything else that is surrounding. If you have one excuse that you want to be and that to, that you want to be understood about, for example, you're a man, you're bringing this issue. You know the time you're not uh, emotionally available to have these discussions. But is everything else tackled? Because if everything else tackled, I've had some women who say. I know, I know, I would really want him to be better in that area, but he's, ve- he's a very good father. But he's a very good friend. But he understands me. You get it. As in, there are other components that make I was up a, I was about the resentment. That means it lessens the resentment instead of knowing that all the other areas are not made up for and you want this person to still I was about you. to go there. Mm. That while you lead... You may not be perfect, mm. but there is room for growth. Yes. And then how we evolve in our leadership is by being able to understand and be able to prioritize and know the measures with which you respond, mm. appropriate, engage, mm. deliver, and etc. And, ETC. Mm. and as men, we, much as we say women are emotional, and we are logical. 
but trust me there is a percentage of emotions that is with us as men as well yes that when i am troubled when i'm i'm, I'm in pain you much as much as i've been told and i've been trained and i've been over and over that a man doesn't cry i cry of course you break down. okay if you don't have the physical tears you'll shed them internally mm. and that's why people get suicidal people get depressed and mm. uh, and stressed and mm. it is and it is because they're trying to battle something stronger than them sometimes the only way to do it is letting it out mm. so the reason as to why there's always room for growth and I, the reason that's why I said there's always room for growth is, is as simple as this. That then, everything else that has been affected because of one decision should be my learning point. Mm. That if I'm stressed at my workplace by my bosses, mm. okay, by my supervisor, by my partners, mm. by my, my employees and ETC, it is not my wife who did it. It's not my children who did it. They it's not that. So, I should be able to draw the line between the father and the breadwinner. Yeah. The husband and the The father, the husband and the breadwinner. Mm. Because at this place or at this point, my job starts with being able to provide with, for my family. Mm. But then, it does not take away the element of the, uh, uh, the this the element that mm. my children are emotionally invested and involved yes. that they love their they need me they love their daddy mm. they do not they're not interested in the big boss they're not interested Excuses. in the MP mm. um, the member of parliament the they're president. not interested in the president they're interested in their dad mm. their father mm. and what they would want is to be able to come and sit on your lap mm. and be free with you mm. so I would say that it is. A discipline. It is a measure of uh, you being able to get to a place to evolve and grow. Mm. That uh, you made a mistake once, don't do it twice. Yeah. Don't do it three, yeah. three times or yeah. four times because eventually you lose the most important thing called your home mm. if you continue with the same habit. So, when I am stressed, okay, the question is when will I stop being stressed? It may not yeah. be there because yeah. work here and uh, what I look at work is continuous. And if it is continuous, I'll always have to battle everything that makes work Stressful. really work. Work is stress in a way. Mm. Work is effort in mm. a way. Mm. Work is sacrifice in a way. Everything that comes with work takes a little bit of you as a must because you either investing, your thinking, your resources, your time, you're taking a risk, you don't know how it will turn out. You know how it will so it is an everyday thing that you're going to be doing for the rest of your work days. Mm. Now the question is, would you want to keep thriving at your workplace while you are going down at home? No. You would want to thrive at your workplace while you're thriving at home. Yes. So you just learn the skill mm. of separating the two. Mm. That I am a breadwinner but that I'm does not take away the fact that mm. I am a husband to someone's daughter. Mm. I am a father to my children. A protector. And they need a defender, those roles. And they need them. A provider. And they need them. So mm. when I report home, I should be able to do my roles. Mm. Wow. Very tough. Yeah. Hilda, it's, it's very tough. tough. It's, it's it really is. tough. I've been it's in a place where I just want to go on a holiday. Mm. Why? Because I just need a place that is serene, mm. so quiet, and blah, blah. But yeah, it can happen once in a while. Mm. You can't be on holiday every day. Every day, yeah. So uh, uh, have I taken the holidays? Yeah, it's where I go for a vacation. And I'm like, I just want to be in a very quiet place with mm. only my wife and I just relax. Mm. Yes. With only your headache. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> some some people call their wives headaches. With my painkiller. <laughs> with your painkiller, now you see, you've even <laughs> made it better. But I want us to go into because there are certain things that we've had quite often in the counselling sessions um, when people say, and I think it's the reason why people pack up, pack their bags and go. Okay, and um, the reason as to why we usually say that we cancel nine one one. Couples, couples because they come at the verge of a of breakup, breakup. Yeah. like the resentment has built and built, built and built yeah. until it's pouring over it's an explosion. and now they want to go that is the reason why people go and the reason as to why most of these people will, they will be very simple one of them is the habits that never change 
come. That I have told her again and again and again and again. Yeah. It's the same thing, the company that she keeps. Yeah. It's the same thing, the man that she sees at, at her office that she's always with, chatting with him deep into the night. Yeah. And I don't, it has happened for five years. We have yeah. quarreled about it from the first year of this, of the marriage. Yeah. And until now, she's still chatting with her boss at, 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 at midnight. And I don't think I will ever win that battle. So there are things that the people, your spouse has requested you to change. It yeah. could be a relationship. It could even be a relative, you know, who says, stop poking at me. Mind your business. Yeah. But you keep doing it over and over. You're in their business. You're poking your nose. You're not just getting out of people's business. So you realize that when someone, that robs you of your power, you might start and say, maybe I can stand and fight. Let me see how far this can go. Because no one gets into a marriage and wants to quit immediately. But after some time, it becomes a blow and yeah. they can't stand it anymore. And so the resentment keeps growing until it gets to a place that it's an injury level, that right now words cannot work. Yeah, absolutely. Because we start, uh, I think it's, it's actually like depression. Because depression starts when you are fine, you're well, and then you get into the reactionary mode. Now, most couples are at a reactionary mode. They are complaining about this, but you're always complaining about, but I told you that lady is my friend at work. But, you know, you're giving too much time to your friend. But, so you are bickering and you're talking, you're quarreling about the same thing year in, year out, month in, month, month So if out. I if I can hear you right, you're mm. saying pick out some of those elements that you've had over repeatedly. and over repeatedly mm. coming from your partner in form of complaints yes. and pay attention. Yes. Because now the question is, why do you think mm. partners fail to pay attention? Don't you think mm. don't you think that it is choice? Mm. Don't you think it is deliberate? Mm -hmm. It's intentional that they're not doing it? Yes. Now I would Very want us deliberate. to I would want us to go a little bit into that because mm. I imagine someone listening, probably mm. as a couple, has gone through that. And they've oh, gone they through that. Through it. And so here is your partner who's been complaining mm. about the same thing. Mm. Okay? And you've only reacted. Sidelined. Diverted the conversation, dodged Avoided. the conversation, called her mad. <laughs> so, uh -huh. so mm. tell me, mm. is it intentional? It's very and deliberate. And if it's intentional, mm. then what's the remedy? Because then that means you're coming from an informed decision. Mm -hmm. You've made up your mind to stay like that. Mm -hmm. You've made up your mind to keep that way. You're not and willing. And if you have made up your mind to keep that way, then what you need to hear is different from what we're talking about right now exactly because then it's not just resentment you already agreed with yourself that i don't care if she gets resentment or, or whether she leaves this or relationship or, she, yeah, or this I don't marriage care. exactly and that is where that was the genesis of deliberately selfish at the end of the day to be able to know that this is a grown-up man or a grown-up woman that is never getting younger, that has made a decision for the past 10 years to do the same thing, to keep cheating, poking every skirt and peeping every skirt or having side dudes one after another. And that's the thing that you usually tell, you, tell us, that someone has told you who they are, but you have refused to understand that this is who they are and they're not willing to change. So when you ask me what next, that means the choice is one-sided now. The one that has been receiving the unjust, the unfair treatment, the one whose resentment has gone high, because as your resentment is piling up, they are enjoying. They are on debts, they are in lodges, they are having the fun of their life. For you, you are growing thinner and smaller and depressed. You are about to be admitted to Butabika because you love someone that, cannot, that is not willing to change for the past 10 years. If that is not madness, then I question what it is. That means you must be able to get to a level of deciding on your own because this person will never come into full decision with you. That maybe this relationship is dead. This marriage, this is the dead end. I must be able to choose myself and work on my healing journey without this person because they are not willing. You, cannot you can take a donkey to, to the well, but you can never force it to drink the water. So the idea here... Okay, so... She starts on a journey of loving herself, taking care of herself. Mm -hmm. And if I may read right, she begins to, she begins to live a life without any expectations. Yes, with from, purpose, from, um, chasing her goals. Without any expectations mm. from the husband. 
that uh, my husband has gone into a place where he has chosen the other relationship over, over me. Over this. But I don't want to just throw in a, a, a towel. A towel and I don't want away. to give up right now. Mm. But since he has not told me pack your bags and go, mm. he's only resented me. Mm. I will... Not resented me. Just forsaken me and neglected me. Whatever. Because you are the one, the one that the unjust things have been Hilda, done to you are the one resenting. Let's get it right. Let's, <laughs> let's Hilda, for you. Situations. Let me make my point. Mm-hmm. So, this woman mm. goes on a journey, mm. love herself, yep. has no expectations from the man. A hard journey. I know. Mm. But she keeps it and continuously, consistently gets to that journey all by herself, without any expectations from the man. So, in other words, when she wants to hang out with the friends, she doesn't have to seek... Permission. She no. just goes. When she wants to have a nice meal anywhere... Go get it yourself. When she wants a holiday... Dress when well, she wants smell a new dress, nice. When yeah. she wants a new pair of shoes... So, in other words, the home at that point... Is drifting apart. Say it again. Yes, it is. There are two islands islands. living on the same... So, she takes that journey. So, at what point, Hilda, Mm -hmm. do we hope this home to come back together? If the other... Or (laughs) or we... we If the offender... No, if the offender is sensible enough to even pick the signals, or they even have any ounce of interest ever, because when you take that journey, I usually tell my clients, when you take the deliberately selfish journey, chances are the offender is going to look back and is like, ah, Nakatuda has been crying after me and chasing after me holding my Ibukongovuli. And now she's not doing anything. She's not wallowing in self-pity. She's having the fun of her life. Me, so it's possible me, she will, he will run back. Yeah. But guess what? He will only run back to check whether the changes are permanent. If the changes are not permanent, if, if let me just say, Joffrey comes back to check on, on Naka today, and uh, Naka today all of a sudden melts into Joffrey's hands and is like, oh, I've missed you, but finally God has reconciled us. Joffrey is like, hmm, I was coming to check, but I am still with the pretty rose in the lodge, and I'm still interested also in that snatched waist. So, mm-hmm. so he goes back. So he goes back. So what you you're start saying, crying okay, again. What <laughs> you're saying, Naka today in this case, mm. even when they come check on her, mm. she must continue on that journey. Exactly. She must continue that. Even when all of a sudden he's not been, uh, been staying home. All the weekends he's been being on safaris eh, for the past five years. And all of a sudden, because you are putting on high heels and you're loving on yourself and you have your friends. And you're and looking papa, good. And you're looking good and smelling hot. Okay. <laughs> now, this <laughs> is trouble. what happens. <laughs> that weekend he's at home. And when he's at home, are you thinking about being the best wife? No. This is not the time to be the best wife. This is the time. Okay. Let to me, put on your high heels I have so many questions. and get out of the house. I have so many questions. Mm-hmm. At, that be, at, at that point, mm. are they still sleeping in the same bed? Of course, they're still sleeping, still sleeping in, the in the same, same bed. bed and they but are, he can't satisfied from somewhere else. So you don't give him? You, of course, he's, he's satisfied. You already know that he has snatched Gundi out there. So you don't. No, but, but okay. no, th- this is... Uh, th- okay, no, 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 let me give this disclaimer because <laughs> you guys might get me wrongly. The thing is... This, some of these things, these guys are not hiding anymore. Okay? Yeah. So you actually know that he has someone, so a mistress somewhere. So, so okay. that means uh, uh, no, 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 you I'm, are protecting your health no. by saying, no, I am not patting my legs for anything, even when we are married. Until you can get the sense enough to know that you want us to hold hands together. The Bible says that two cannot walk together so, uh, uh, unless they agree. So if you want to hold hands again, Hilda, we will check perfect, again perfect. and uh, then we will start on a journey that is understandable. And if I don't understand anything, I am back in to my shell. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Now, Naka today on her journey, mm-hmm. does she get involved with other men? No. No. Okay. No, never. Uh, say that again. On a deliberately so you, selfish, selfish journey, you, you do don't. not. Whether you are resentful. So in other words, in everything that you are doing, you're upright. You're upright. You uphold your all morals. That, all, that, all that you want mm. is to at least see. No, no, not chance. only see. Mm. Not only see that there is chance, mm. but to at least get to a place where you can get yourself back exactly because you are losing yourself to someone who's un- unavailable and you so you can't. want to you want to redeem yourself exactly you're working on redeeming yourself yeah. to be at least um 
a build your confidence, of your esteem, mm. uh, believe in you, believe in uh, some of the, some of the ladies even drop their careers and yes. they stop working and yes. they because they they've lost it all. Yeah. So you're trying you in a redemption mode. Yes. So my problem again Don't with, go getting other problems. So don't. So other, my issue my issue again Hilda. Other problems then. At when this man mm. now s- comes back reformed. Mm changed mm. pretty rose is no longer in the picture mm. and he has demonstrated it mm-hmm. like for one year or two years mm-hmm. what are the chances that naka today will continue on that path mm-hmm. and never ever mm-hmm. get back mm-hmm. get and back build, to what? build a home with a reformed transformed better man that uh was gone and lost now, to mean mm. if this was a strategy mm. by naka today mm. with the mind of at a certain point making it work making it work mm. at w- do you think naka today will ever drop that lifestyle if she's been on that road do you think she will ever get to a point where now she can seek the leadership of the husband mm-hmm. involve the husband mm. and build a home together mm. or she will continue on that road and never come back now uh, uh, and, and, and what uh-huh. i hate about uh, that uh-huh. i must say is um it's just like the way we help the nice men the yeah. nice men it's a thin line the nice men some of them we've helped them to understand and build their self esteem and become confident and become confident but th- then when their esteem is built and their confidence they is wrong. built they just go and they never come they back they become wild so at what point does naka today get to this place where now mm. my husband has reformed is changed willing to build a home has dropped p- pretty rose reports home uh, mm. early is taking c- care of the kids is really helping is demonstrating everything that i will need in a man mm. do you think nakatuda would ever leave that road to come back to the builder? it's po- it's very possible so to how? some of them how now, because how? Hilda, let me tell you mm. I-, I want you to understand this mm. there is nothing as beautiful as this being able most especially for the married men mm. or even women mm. to ever test what it means to be single again mm. and free single, and wild way mm. single and free mm. ay, 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 ay. Mm. it's something that i would dread ever for any married couples that once one has tested what it means not to be accountable to the other now it let takes me just, a let miracle <laughs> for them to turn back. To turn back. That's very true. So, uh, so help us. But I, I, I will also come from the angle of it. Also depends because uh, when I wrote deliberately selfish, I had not gone through the d- the depth of what actually people go through. But one of them that actually helps them turn around, or why some of them never turn around, is the depth of the heart and the depth of the wounds that have been instilled on them during this relationship because when they start the self uh, love journey when they get that power back most of the times they look back and they're like i was um, i was a rug i was actually stabbed i was left for the dead that is why how they see how grave the mistakes that the other person did okay now in this journey as the other person is trying to come back they are also very uh, sheepish they're like mm, is, she, is he coming back for real does he want this now the moment they see any kind of meandering then they're like you know what yeah, i don't think that they are actually ready for this journey but those that have been helped and you have gone on a proper journey and then also the upbringing matters that you have a moral compass okay if you try to balance someone that doesn't have a natural moral compass inside of them it's very easy for them to go off the rails. If they don't have the fear of God, very easy to go off the rails because then they are going to be uncontrollable when they get the new freedom. But the people that have a good moral compass, they have the fear of God and they really loved this man. Even when this man tried to do all the things, but there was, it was real love in the first place. Yeah. Most of the times when the man tends to yeah. come back and they see one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and, yeah. and this man is reformed. In most cases. Now, very slowly. They are yeah. not. We don't even advise them to fully cut back to be the one who they were before yeah. because they were in our when a woman decides to be a wife yeah. they can totally let go of themselves mm. now we don't encourage you to just cut from a hundred to zero and just come back the way you used to be because chances are he hated some versions of who you used to be 
And now that there is a bit of improvement, now that you're more attractive and all that, do not drop the putting on well. Do not drop the smelling well. Do not drop. But when you are going out, inform him. Okay? As, ask him that, you know what, I'm going out. If he says, can I pick you? Say, yes, sir. Pick me. I'll be done by this time. Let him find you at the exact place where you said you would be, with the exact people that you said you would be with. And before you know it, that some people have testified that their marriages have gotten back and better, better. Yeah. than they were before. That the woman now is self-aware that she loves herself. And this applies to both sides, yeah, by the I've, way. I've had that men appreciating yeah, the new version of their wives. The, yes. Yeah. So it's possible. So it's, it's, po it's, it's doable. It's possible. My only challenge with it is once someone has tested that kind of life, mm. usually they don't cut down on um, their lifestyle. Mm. And th th that's where we ended up with a discussion and of uh, the so-called um, uh, go-getters. Let me also uh, chip, chip this in because most of the times the depth of the wound that I talked about, I didn't elaborate them. But some of these wounds are words that can never be withdrawn. That even when you turn around as a man and come back to your woman, but you told her that she has long, dark breasts, she will never be comfortable undressing before you. You get it. You abused her color. You insulted as it was below the belt. You did not fight fair. That even when you were enjoying your pretty rose, you found so now she went into a comparison journey and saying, maybe you are better off with those that are pretty. Why are you turning back right now? Because I am not who you want to be. Because you insulted me below the belt. You get it. And maybe in the process you found also insulting her mother. Or in, as in the things that she holds core and very important in, in her life, those words people never forget. They might try to turn the other way, to divert, but they might never forget. So every time you're turning around and she remembers those words, they cut her deeper. And so she's like, you know what? I think the best thing is I can never live on these thorns for the rest of my life. The best thing is to totally walk away Hilda, and find my, my, new, my, my new life. I will tell you. I think uh, one skill that I've mastered that has really helped me, and I, I've, I've, I've said before, I've learned this from my father. At the peak of your emotions, just shut up. There is a man who yeah. told a lady just how her, her, her sex and how her everything sucks just now that he had found another one. Yeah, now just imagine, how do you turn your head back to come into that home yeah, and I you know. expect that I woman know. will ever enjoy oh. intimacy with you? Because every time she will be trying to kiss, she will remember the words that you tell her, yeah. how she's not sweet, yeah. how she's not good, how she's not warm, how she's not, and all, all because, the, yeah. and you, get, you were with her for 10 years, you gave birth to five children and with a woman who was not sweet and that is when you discovered yeah. she was sweet because now you have another person yeah. that is out there. Yeah. How do you recover from that? Exactly. I know. I agree. And it takes prayer. It, te it, takes, it takes prayer. prayer. It takes because it's only God who can heal those wounds. But I was saying mm. at the peak of your emotions, you can only do regrettable stuff. Yes. So I learned this from my dad that shut up. Mm. Shut up. You, you, you never go wrong when you shut your big mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and t take a walk if mm. necessary mm. you'll come back better mm. i i've been in those spaces so many times when i feel like calling someone a name mm. and i'm like tim <laughs> uh, shut your big you're mouth. better than <laughs> you're better than that better i know than and this, people can get on our nerves you can like they not can get on our who mm. you are for this, yeah. I think you're created for better. And you know, you keep speaking to yourself and speaking and you to come yourself down. and speaking to yourself until you're like, oh, yeah, it's God, gone. It's it gone. has passed. And you know when it's passed, you only wonder why you were reacting. Yeah. Because then you realize that my peace cannot be bought with any amount of money. Very it's more important. important. Yeah. To the men out there, keep quiet. Mm -hmm. if you must. And then number two. Even the ladies. Yeah, but, but so I speak to the men. And the ladies, they I can speak. speak. When well, a woman like, opens her mouth to uh, speak. If you're a man and you're listening to me, you win a thousand and one battles with your mouth. Shut. You win so many. Mm. Number two. Mm. You, 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 will, uh, <laughs> you will never win a conversation with your woman. Mm -hmm. Allow your woman to be right. Uh-huh. And, <laughs> and well, sleep well. True. <laughs> <laughs> what are you telling me? You want to sleep well, Omar the true. men? 
<laughs> you want to sleep well? You allow her to win. When will issues be addressed? Uh, are you allow her to win? You, because you she has, to put her she in has the place. ability to come to her senses and know that she was wrong. Mm. Because if she was wrong, ha, you she will. You have never seen some women. Uh, you have never seen some it's women. as simple as this. Mm. This is what happens. Mm. I'll give very simple examples. Mm. Because the issues, by the way, that will turn a house uh, upside down Very is as small. simple as mm. the choice of the food to make for the guests that are coming. Mm. Why do you have to battle yourself about so? Mm -mm. You have your peace, Chiba mm here. -hmm. <laughs> it's until <laughs> she's like, singa na koze chino, and you're like, thank God that you <laughs> you, you know, you're like, you give yourself peace because. Mm curtains facing in and outside. I know. You leave, you leave. The chairs. Wherever you put them, they are okay. They look nice. Uh -huh. They look okay. <laughs> the chairs are facing the other direction. Chigaro. Eh? Sometimes <laughs> give yourself peace because you have better things to think about uh -huh. and worry about. You're like school fees. Uh, uh, you give yourself peace. Let me tell you the best thing that you can get in your home as a man is your peace. But you know that that comes with, with maturity. And uh, a lot of it. For those that are 20 a years old, they are always boxing, a lot of it. A fighting lot of it. and fidgeting. At least, at least, if it gets to the choice of the house to rent, because now that's going to get into your pocket. Mm. You fight a little bit. Mm. You tell her that I can't afford that we house of two million. Mm. I can afford a house of 700,000. Mm. Whether it's in Muyenga or it's in Lubiji or it's in wherever, wherever it but is, 700,000, this is my budget. Mm. There you find it will, you understand. Mm. Because then you know, you don't want to look a failure in front of your wife why because they are throwing you out of the house yeah i mean you you said yes to a house you can't you can't you can't afford, afford. Yeah. so there that's a worthy fight you there you fight a little bit mm. which school you're taking the kids uh -huh. to? There, there you you which like, hospital you're uh -huh. taking the kids uh -huh. to? Yeah, anything oh, involving oh, you engage deals. you engage a little bit but uh -huh. David, like, you just say yes <laughs> You're right, but even, the, even the women, Ooh, even the women, Shigalo. a time comes in your life when you don't have to be bothered by everything. Like peace, eh? it's priceless. Yeah, it is. It's very, very priceless. But um, I, I, we want to be able to uh, to come to the conclusion of this um, of this conversation. I think uh, we've only talked about the things that don't uh, the, the things that don't change when you request for a change for a very long time, and it's not change and and it's not no changes are being made. Yeah. That is an explosion of resentment and that takes you just like you said when you are well to a reactionary stage to an injured stage now an injured stage even in um, in depression we say an injury uh, when you get to the injury that means counseling cannot help you at the reactionary we can help you but at the injured stage you also need a clinical psychologist yeah, you need a bit of you. medication yeah. mm. to be able to be helped now for those that go from injury they get into illness that is how you are admitted into what you start putting your clothes up you start now even when it comes to um to the resentment you realize that it keeps raising it keeps raising, it's the, it keeps raising. Stages, you yeah. look at someone and you loathe them you even ask yourself why did i marry this person what did i see in this person and you keep and it keeps getting worse yeah. but at the reactionary stage you were just exchanging words but you still loved each other yeah. okay so get help if you can get help go for counseling go for therapy meet someone let them give you a t enough time to talk about your issues and so you can be able to solve them but the other thing that i've found so many people speaking about in the counseling sessions is the contempt the contempt that some people feel like they are higher than others yeah and this happens to bo both sides yeah. there's women i think we talked about the the the, the alpha female disguising under but in bad manners there are those who will feel like you are lower than me and i am here and no one in this world and god did not create anyone that is lower than anyone we are all humans but with different roles that a man is a leader and a woman must submit but she also has her roles of nurturing and all and doing all that and there is no role that is higher than the more important than the other because then uh, who are you going to lead if you are more important and you are up there and there is no one that is following you i remember the first book that you gave me to read very early on, I don't think we were even married yet, was uh, husbands who won't, won't lead, lead and, and we're wives who won't, who, won't who won't follow. And it was very eye-opening even when we were not married yet. But when it comes to contempt, you know when someone looks at you in contempt, like Yeah, yeah mm. And most women have said it in terms of whatever I say is trash. When they hear the same contribution like I made from another person, then it is a point. For example, when she says, let's build like this, and 
the husband is like, uh, you're senseless. Like, there is, there is no contribution you've ever made that. Oh, looks at her in contempt. But maybe his auntie says the same thing. And then he will carry the same thing, bring it to the wife. Oh, do you, can you believe that auntie Namboza said that we do like this? And this woman is like, how dense? I told you the same thing. Okay? So why are you carrying another person's word like it is means heaven and earth, and then mine means nothing? That means you are trying to shatter someone's uh, self-esteem, someone's confidence to the level that they can never contribute anything in your life. So contempt is one thing that I have rampantly had in the sessions. I, I will tell you, Hilda, and this specifically again goes to the men, mm. our upbringing, the way we were cultured, mm. okay, contributes a lot in the way we, um, we handle ourselves and in the way we deal with others. Mm. Now, I, I, I don't know if I've said this before, but I think in our discussions we've had this, that the subconscious mind is so powerful. Mm. And you know, the subconscious mind is usually built between certain ages. Yes. And so it is so powerful and influential in the decisions you make thereof. Yes. That you find yourself you find yourself becoming your dad without knowing. Exactly. And what what helps there is belonging to associations where they can influence you to better change, yeah. to tweak and change that. And that's why we do these organizations like Men, Men Meet, Meet yeah. Men Initiative, Come, Learn from Another Man, blah, blah, blah. Because we are somehow trying to deal with your subconscious so mind a bit, you treat. a bit. Because mm. some men have been told that a woman is nothing. Yeah. That's why it can never call a woman a honey. I, I was somewhere and someone said, she's just a woman. How does she speak back to me? Mm. And, and you realize it's not really him. It's how he was cultured, brought up. That's what he saw. So he's becoming, he's become his dad. I know. He's really become his father in so many ways. Yep. His subconscious mind was built and his, ev everything that he does, he picks from that. Because it contributes like half of everything mm. I, I remember someone doing a demonstration and he put a big circle and said the subconscious mind takes 50 percent mm. 50 and it feeds the cautious and, mind and it feeds the cautious mind without knowing without thank you it's next up on you Ooh. you make a decision like that and only yeah. realize huh. but one thing i realized so in this mm. modern day and age mm. things have changed yes Things have totally really different. changed. Mm. There's some conversation I was having this morning mm. where we were, and we were saying, how do we handle the digital era, yeah. then the Gen Zs, mm. and versus us, mm. who are the from a totally generation. different generation. Mm. And it's quite a huge thing. Yeah. You cannot take it for granted. It's really huge mm. that having this generation's coexist is tough, mm. very tough. Mm. So I would say that if you're a man, don't feel small mm. and uh, stupid mm. to belong to an association, a mm. group. Uh, Where your so mindset many, can be Yes, we, uh, marriage groups, church fellowships, men gatherings, blah, blah, blah. Because there is a lot to learn from another man yeah. and the way they are living. Because That's what you need is a twist of, of what you thought you knew. Mm. Even in, your w in the way you work, mm. even the way you look at your bosses, even, in your even the way you treat or um, handle relationships. Yeah. There are some men who cannot have a relationship for more than three months yeah. with anyone. Mm. Some cannot keep a job for a year. Yeah. Okay? Mm. Why? Because everything that influences their decision making in their subconscious is mm. not helping. Yep. It's not serving into that. Mm. So that even even from the schools, mm. those schools like uh, from kindergarten, primary, up to whatever, mm. it's very important. That's why someone said that be mindful mm. where your child goes in their early yes. education mm. because it influences a lot mm. about who they become. Who oh, they become. Wow. So, so, uh, so to, to, to the men out there... Do not look down on uh, anyone. Do not look down on anyone. But mm. if you don't have the capacity to mm. join a group of men mm. who have very clear motives, mm. a very clear vision. And growth-minded. And they're growth-minded. Mm. And they're working towards a better goal. It belong to a church. Mm. Belong to a fellowship. Mm. And interact with such men because these are men with it values. And they have a story to tell. Mm. And by the way, that brings me to the point that we're having uh, one. Mm. We do this monthly. 
So on the sixth, we are meeting at some Kajubi's house, where we'll be there, hundreds of men, mm. just to eat together and you know talk play. about, uh, be play and they just play be like ourselves. Children. Yeah, be ourselves mm-hmm. and discuss mm. our issues and challenges, mm. interact and love each other and give each other a hand, mm. and network. Yep. Yeah, so contempt is a huge thing. We've t- we've not talked about everything that we needed to talk about when it comes to resentment because I feel this needs to be unpacked. We will c- do a series on resentment so that at least we can be able to handle most of the issues that we have come across in our counseling sessions. And I know that they will be very helpful to you. Gentlemen, do not look down on ladies. And by the way, when you look down on a lady, she immediately looks down on you because she's only asking what kind like where did you grow up from like who brought you up like what kind of nonsense is this i've seen some of them uh, uh the builders and the engineers when they come and and they're thinking they only have to answer to you and they're only dealing with you so we are in the conversation but they will sometimes they will think like they will even behave like I'm not around. And then later on they discover that I cannot be excluded out of these conversations and I make some of the decisions about what they have to do. And then all of a sudden, nyabo, nyabo, because now they know that uh, they cannot do away with me. They are going to meet me, they are going to talk to me, and they are going to uh, still have to come back to me. So you realize that you look at them and you're like, Kachi, abo, nabo, nanachi. this is really backwardness, really, really backwardness. Okay, so... Stay safe, okay? We have our numbers in case you need help. We are here. Uh, let's talk. Let's chat and see what we can do. On the 26th, we are at the plaza in Kampala, the coach experience. It's going to be an awesome, ex- an awesome experience. Make sure that you come at 5 p.m. It's going to be, ir- uh, you are unrestricted. We are releasing all the restrictions that we have held in our minds and realigning with our purposes and the things that we ought to do in this world. So we're inviting you come join us that day 26th of july at the plaza in kampala 5 p.m see you then